see what else we got down here. I bet this plant has several. Oh yeah, there's our original seed tater we planted right there. Good, good ones. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Up all you guys and gals out there having an incredible day. It is Thursday, November 17th here in South Georgia. Really cold day, just keeps getting colder. I think the warmest it's been all day was first thing this morning. And then it's just been getting colder and colder. Gonna get down pretty cold tonight. I think last time I looked it said 30 degrees. We got a few things we need to do around here. First thing, we need to call it a day on these fall taters right here. Dig these up, see what we've got on all three rows there. Then we got a little bit of harvesting we need to do so we can cover some stuff in preparation for the freeze that we're probably gonna have tonight. Now growing fall taters is something we've tried many times, but only recently have we started to become a little bit successful with it. So we were somewhat successful last year, and then this year the plants look pretty good there. I think we're going to have at least some taters underneath these plants when we dig them in a minute. Now if you want to grow fall taters, really the only way to do it is to use some extra or leftover taters that you have from your spring harvest. You can't really buy seed taters in the fall so if you have leftover taters from the spring harvest that are maybe starting to sprout a little bit and you've got some extra garden space not a bad idea to throw them in the ground and see what happens so we planted these three rows here i think it was in mid august we put whole taters in the ground we planted three different varieties because we had a little extra space in our no-till plot to the right of those pumpkins that we had right there now we've already scratched a few of these red taters here but we haven't messed with these other two rows and you can see not all the taters sprouted we've got some blank spots in there but for the most part we ended up with three full rows so here we have some red taters from some seed stock we've been saving for several years now you can see those plants are starting to look pretty rough which is a sign that they're ready to harvest here we have a variety called huckleberry gold that came from wood prairie farms leftover seed stock from that which we harvested in the spring those plants still look pretty good but this frost tonight is going to get them might as well get them out of the ground and then right here we have a variety called baltic rose that we grew in the spring as well and really really like now before we dig these i should mention that this is my first time growing no-till taters they're not no heel taters or no till taters because they're in our longest established no till plot here with a nice thick compost layer on top. I do think that compost layer on top, which drains really well, helped out when we planted these in mid August when it's still hot and humid outside and those taters can rot in the ground pretty easily, kept things dry, and we got a majority of them to sprout. Now, because it stays kind of dry there, I don't know if that's going to limit the production because we weren't able to keep a lot of moisture around the base of those plants. We're going to see here in a minute, though. So starting out with these red taters right here, this is a combination of red Pontiac and red Viking seed stock we've saved for, I think, three years now. Starting to get some pretty nice ones along the row there. One thing I'm noticing with these is that the color on them is really really bright a lot brighter than my red taters usually are i don't know if that has anything to do with this no-till soil or it's just you know something that happened these are really really pretty that's a nice one right there a lot of good taters in here see what else we got down here i bet this plant has several oh yeah there's our original seed tater we planted right there. Some good ones. We might fill up a bucket here. All right, so that's what we got on our red taters from the plants we had left in this row. Probably somewhere around 12 to 15 row feet of taters. And not too daggum bad there. They started off a little small, but we ended up getting some pretty nice ones there now we're getting after these huckleberry golds here this is one of the varieties we grew in spring that we really really liked i was a little bit worried these didn't have enough time to do their thing because the plants still look okay but after pulling up that first plant you can see we've got some nice pretty purple taters right there 
I bet there's some more right here. Sure is. Some of them not very big, but they'll still eat. And that's what we got on those purple taters. Pretty tickled with that, getting a bucket full off of fall harvest. Now, I think I misspoke about what variety this was. I said it was huckleberry gold, but as I saw that these were white taters on the inside, this is Caribe, which is another good variety we grew in the spring. But you can easily tell it's Caribe by the white flesh there. This variety here makes some mighty, mighty fine tater chips. Then the last variety we've got here is Baltic Rose, which is another great one we grew in the spring. And my camera keeps freezing up out here in this cold weather. It wants to act up. But we just dug up this one plant here, and that's what we got off one plant. That one there split a little bit rotten, but the rest of these look really, really good. All right, so not only did we not get skunked, we actually got a fairly respectable harvest here. So we got... Our red taters down in there. We got our Caribe right here. That's the white tater I showed you earlier. And then we got our Baltic Rose here, which has a nice, pretty yellow inside. And I think, given how many plants we were working with off each row, if we take that into consideration, I think these two wood prairie varieties here whooped our red tater seed stock pretty good. I'd have to weigh them all. To really see we're really happy with the production on these two here now we knew going into this that our fall tater harvest wasn't going to be as significant as our spring tater harvest never seems like it is but if we can do something like this get a respectable yield that makes it all worth it now let me share a couple tips that i've learned over the years failing at this fall tater thing more than i have succeeded so number one works best to plant whole taters in the fall. Now in the spring, we cut our taters up to make our seed stock stretch further, but in the fall, seems like it works best to plant the whole ones. Cut taters will be more susceptible to rotting than whole taters will, from my experiences. And when it's still hot and humid outside, when we plant these things in late summer, we don't want them to rot if we get a lot of rain. So planting whole ones has worked best for me. I started being successful when I started planting whole taters in the fall. And then the other thing is that your seed taters need to have some pretty decent sprouts on them. They need to be chitted or sprouted pretty well. If you put them in the ground and they don't have hardly any sprouts on them, it's going to take them too long to sprout and then you're not going to get any decent production. So only plant whole taters that have some pretty big sprouts on them if you're going to grow for fall. And then the last thing would have to do with planting time. So taters are going to need at least 90 days to make something most of the time. If you can grow them out to 100 days or so, that's even better. But you need at least 90 days. So if you're wondering when to plant fall taters, think about when your average first frost date is in the fall. Count back at least 90 days and you need to put them in the ground by then. Now I know this first frost date thing can be all over the place. This year we've had some really early first frosts which have kind of thrown me off a little bit. I would have liked to have left those in the ground another week or two. We could have had a little bigger taters here. But just go by the average there, give yourself 90 days or so, and you should have something. All right, so I had to switch over from my camera to my phone. So if it looks a little different or sounds a little different, that's why. But one more thing to mention about taters and won't be long, you know, just a few more months before we'll be planting spring taters. So I'm not going to save any of these for spring planting. I'm going to start with all new seed taters. I have noticed with my red tater seed stock, it performs a little less every time I replant it. And it makes sense because your big tater growers, they always start with fresh good seed stock instead of saving the same generation over and over. I know a lot of people do that, but from my experiences, it seems like the production declines each time we replant from that same stock. So we're going to have all new seed taters come spring. We'll try some new varieties from Wood Prairie in addition to a couple that we tried last year and we really liked. I went and checked on their website earlier. They're already taking orders for taters in the spring and from my experiences they'll ship them to you as soon as you want them 
you can get them and plant them in late January as long as they can get them shipped without them freezing. So if you want to go take a look at what they have, you can do that on their website, woodprairie.com, I think is the website. And as always, you can use the code LazyDogFarm to get a discount there. I think it's a 5% discount. I'll be sure to keep you updated when we do order our seed taters, which varieties we're going to be trying and growing in the spring. Now the last thing I need to do before I go inside and bundle up for the evening is add a little frost protection on a few things out here. Some of the things out here, we're just going to let the frost have. But I got a few things I want to save. I'm not going to try to save these pole lima beans this time. We've already got eight or ten bags in the freezer and I've got two more gallon bags full shelled that I need to blanch and freeze tonight. So we've got a good bit of production off this so far. There may be some beans inside there that make it. It may be that the outside here just catches some frost damage and the inside is all right. We'll see what happens, but we've already got plenty off this grow out where I'm fine if we lose it. And then for our Ruiz Oakry seed grow out here, I don't think I'm going to do anything with this. I could run a sprinkler all night on it, but we've got lots of good mature pods at the top there, as you can see. So if the frost terminates these plants, no big deal. I think we've accomplished our goal by growing out a lot of seed. In this plot, we've got some pretty big broccoli plants and some pretty decent sized cauliflower plants, but no heads yet. So I don't really have anything to worry about here. If we had heads forming, I'd be a little bit worried because those things can get bit by the frost. With the plants themselves, should be fine. Same thing with the Brussels sprouts, the cabbage. We've got the peppers covered over there. So not worried about anything in this plot. In a raised bed plot here, most of this stuff should be fine. Got some watermelon radishes over there in that far corner. They may get bit back a little bit, but we're just gonna let those ride. This bed right here, I do want to cover again. We left the hoops there last time, and I think I may need to prune a little bit of this stuff back just so that Agrabon fits over those hoops better. May need to trim back those zinnias, that basil a little bit, maybe that cilantro a little bit. The deal should be fine, but this bed looks too pretty to lose it already. All right, so we got some of that stuff cut back there. Got us a bag of cilantro and basil along the way. And we got it covered up nicely. Hopefully that will keep everything somewhat protected in there. Might get a little burn from the stuff that's touching the edges of the cloth. But hopefully it doesn't kill any of the plants completely. And then the only other thing I'm going to fool with protecting is this Okinawan spinach plant that we moved to this raised bed just a few videos ago. I did prune it up a little bit more because it was kind of hanging over the edge here. It should grow back just fine, but we want to protect this from the frost. So what I did, I had some of these bamboo poles left over from our tomato trellis earlier this year. I just basically cut them in half and got them equally spaced along the bed here. And I have these little frost protection jackets that work pretty good. I think these are actually made for fruit trees and stuff, but they work pretty good for these round raised beds too. If I can get it over the top here without tearing it, might have to put something over the top of those bamboo pieces. But we'll see if we can get away without having to do that. Get it stretched around the edge here. All right, pretty happy with how that looks. I think that'll work just fine. So hopefully that keeps those few things protected tonight. Not planning on running a sprinkler all night like we did a few weeks ago because we've been harvesting a lot of this warm season stuff that we were growing in the fall. We've kind of gotten the goody out of it for the most part. And if it gets bit now, it just gets bit. No worries at all. I may run the drip irrigation system on the raised beds overnight tonight just to keep that soil moist, keep anything from suffering any damage in there. But I think most everything out here, cool season wise, should be fine. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you enjoyed seeing just how productive fall taters can be if you time it just right. Sometimes it's hard to time it just right, 
but every now and then you get lucky and you get rewarded. And if you decided to grow any fall taters, let me know in the comments below how they did for you. You get a good harvest, just an okay harvest, or was it not worth your time at all? As always, if you're watching on YouTube, you can find links in the description below to any of the products we used in this video. You can also find links to our affiliate partners like Wood Prairie Potatoes that we mentioned earlier. And we've even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh, well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life